In this Lay of Versailles video, we're going to look at the stereochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction. In previous videos, we looked at the Diels-Alder reaction mechanism and a shortcut for quickly identifying products. The problem is, everything was flat. If you take a look at this reaction, we have a diene with two substituents, a dienophile with two substituents, and the product drawn with no stereochemistry. This is acceptable for the starting molecules because this carbon and this carbon on the diene are both sp2 hybridized, that means they're trigonal planar or flat, as well as the dienophile, again, sp2 and sp2 hybridized, trigonal planar and flat. Let's quickly number the molecule. We have one, two, three, four, A and B. This is the trick I teach in the previous videos, which you can find on my website link below or by visiting layerforsci.com slash dealsalder. If we now look at the product with the same numbering scheme, you'll notice that the substituent on carbon 1, carbon 4, A and B are all sitting on sp3 hybridized carbons. sp3 is tetrahedral or three-dimensional and that means the substituents have to go up and out of the page or down and into the page and the question is which one. Let's start with the stereochemistry of a diene. If I have a substituent coming out of carbon 2 or carbon 3, we don't have to worry about it. Why not? Both the starting diene and the cyclohexene product have the substituents sitting on an sp2 carbon. It started out flat, it ended flat, and so the substituent is still in the plane of the page. No stereochemistry. This changes if the substituent sits on carbon 1 or 4. Since this carbon is sp2 hybridized, one substituent will point straight up and on carbon 4 straight down. The second substituent would point inward, down on carbon 1, up on carbon 4. Let's call the outside substituents A and the inside substituents B. We'll react with a simple dienophile to give a product that looks like this. If the substituent is outside, that means it's pointing straight up or straight down, then the substituent goes on dashes into the page. If the substituent is inside, our product will be on a wedge coming up and out of the page. This used to confuse me, and so I like to think of it as follows. The inside substituents are close together, and so we want to bring them closer. How do we bring them closer? By drawing them up and out of the page, they're coming directly at me, closer to me. The outside substituents are further apart, and so we push them away. How? By pushing them down and into the page. This works even if your starting molecule is a ring, such as the cyclopentadiene. Notice that the ring counts as my inside substituents, and hydrogen will count as the outside. And so for our product, we start with our cyclohexene. The starting molecule is 1, 2, 3, 4, with carbon 5 as the tip that we're going to draw upward the way I taught you in the previous video. Upward because it's the inside substituent, and so they're close together. We bring them closer, up and out of the page. And while you don't have to show hydrogens for the sake of stereochemistry, I'm going to draw them down because they're further away, and so we push them further down into the page. You can also draw your cyclohexene as a breadbasket, with carbon-5 coming up and out of the page, and the hydrogen, which is typically invisible, down and into the page. Now let's take a look at the dienophile stereochemistry, specifically endo and exo. Starting with a simple molecule that has an aldehyde substituent, to give me the following product. If I draw cyclohexene, I have an option of putting the aldehyde group coming up and out of the page, or going down and into the page. The convention for this comes from having ring substituents, but we'll simplify it here to say that if it's coming up and out of the page, this is the exo substituent. And the way I think of it is that it's exiting up out of the page. If it's going down and into the page, I think of it as the endo substituent because it enters into the page. Endo going in and exo coming up and out. Now what happens if I have two substituents on my dienophile, such as two aldehydes in opposite or trans configuration, or two aldehydes in the same or cis configuration. The cis and trans stereochemistry will be retained, and once again I have the option of drawing it two different ways. For the trans option, I can put the upper aldehyde out and the lower one in, 
or the opposite, giving me two different products that in this case are enantiomers of each other. Be careful though, they're not always enantiomers. If I add a methyl group here, now the two products become diastereomers. And I challenge you to figure out why that changes. Same thing for the cis configuration. The product will still be cis. And so I have the option of bringing both of the groups up and out of the page, or both of the groups down and into or into the page. Since both substituents go in the same direction, when they come up and out of the page or exit the page, we get the exo. And when they go down and into or into the page, we get endo. For even more on the deals alder reaction, including the tricks and shortcuts that I mentioned earlier, visit my website link below or go to layerforsci.com slash deals alder. Again, that's layerforsci.com slash deals alder. For even more on organic chemistry, including practice quizzes, cheat sheets, videos, and more, follow along with your syllabus on my website at layerforsci.com slash syllabus.